idea behind trig substitution is to sort of eliminate the radical when you have an expression that looks like this. And we want that to end up being one of the sides of a right triangle. And when you use trig substitution, you want to use either sine, tangent, or secant. You want the substitution not to contain a radical, and you don't want any variable in the, the denominator. That helps you decide whether to use sine, tangent, or secant. So when I have the square root of x squared plus 9, that looks like the sum of the squares of the legs, because I have a plus sign here. So that means the legs are x and 3. Do I put the x where the 3 is and the 3 here or vice versa? Well, I don't want the variable to be in the denominator, and I want to use tangent. So I'll put the x here, x over 3. And now I'm ready to do all this to, in preparation for the substitution. The tangent of theta equals x over 3. So x equals 3 tangent theta. The dx equals 3 secant squared theta, d theta. x squared equals 9 tangent squared theta. And here's the whole reason we use trig substitution is because the square root of x squared plus 9, I can replace x squared with 9 tangent squared theta, factor out the 9, and then replace tangent squared theta plus 1 with secant squared. Now I can take the square root and get 3 secant theta. And now I have everything I need to substitute. So the x squared becomes 9 tangent squared theta. The radical in the denominator becomes 3 secant theta. And dx becomes 3 secant squared theta d theta. If you cancel out some of the common factors, I can see these cancel out. One of the secants cancels out. So I get 9 tangent squared theta secant theta d theta. Now, how do you find the antiderivative of this? Well, there's different techniques that can be used. Uh, you could use integration by parts. On this screen, I've shown replacing tangent squared theta with secant squared theta minus 1. Then I'm going to distribute the secant of theta and break it apart into two antiderivatives. I need the antiderivative of secant cubed minus the antiderivative of secant. Those are usually formulas that you can find in the back of a calculus textbook. We uh, you normally would do these if you had to derive the formula using integration by parts, but I just substituted the formula for secant cubed is this whole thing right here. And the antiderivative of secant of theta is this. And I can see that these last two terms are similar. ln of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. So I have my half of one of those minus one of those. That gives me minus a half. So I have combined the similar terms. I've got the nine out front. Now, what do I do with that? Well, that's where I got to come back to this little right triangle and replace secant theta, tangent theta with what they are in terms of x. So I'll go back to on the board two. Here's what we have so far. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So it's the square root of x squared plus 9 over 3. That's what this is right here. And oh, by the way, I pulled out the 1 half. And made it nine halves out front. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, x over three. And there they are again. And I simplified it a little bit by multiplying these two factors together. We got x times the square root of x squared plus nine over nine, minus these are two fractions that have a common denominator. So I combine the numerators. And finally, I put the plus c at the end. Okay. And to convince yourself that that really is the antiderivative, you could use Desmos. Here, I've said that big F is the antiderivative of, of this G that I started with. And I use the 
Desmos derivative operator to get f of x. There's the graph using the Desmos operator. And there's the graph of G uh, as what was in the original problem. And they overlap each other. So that means that indeed, this is the answer. Okay, with a plus C, of course, at the end. There you go. Hope that helped. If you have any questions, post a comment. Thank you.